Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reading Valkri. This was a story suggested by Gundam 2018B. Thank you Gundam for making the suggestion. I highly appreciate it. And for everybody watching this video, uh, you know, make sure to check out Gundam's YouTube channel. I'll be putting a link in the description below so you could check his channel out. And again, thank you Gundam for the suggestion. I highly appreciate it. And for anybody else, you know, if you have any suggestions, some SCPs, Greek pasta, let me know in the comments down below. If I read the story, I'll give you a shout out. So, yeah. So without any further ado, let's get right into the story. It was an empty aftermath of New York in the near future. The skies were painted red, and the, the rest was as if God was too lazy to do the rest. The city was in ruins, dust covering most of the area and coating buildings, houses, cars, and even people. The people were statues with faces of sorrow and fear. In the middle of what was Times Square, there were two teenage girls, one with blonde hair, the other with dark brown hair that flowed through the dusty wind. They obviously held a grudge with one another, and this was no I hate you kind of grudge. This is a I wish you were dead kind of grudge. The girls were both dirty up, almost equally, with blows ripped and faces gashed, but none, nonetheless, they readied both their weapons and lunged violently at each other. The force from both their liftoffs combined caused a feeble house to collapse as they began to fight tirelessly with both their samurai swords. All the sounds you would hear is gasping, kicking, and snarling, followed by a loud clank of swords, then rinse and repeat. The two swords clash violently, letting out loud clanks and obnoxious metallic noises that would pop a normal human being's eardrums. Without warning, the two fighters burst away from one another, glaring like a tiger would at an animal crossing its territory. Dusting for blood with thirsty eyes as the wind filled the void of silence. The girl with the dark brown hair readied her sword once more, and the blonde girl ready readily followed. Her green eyes locked on the other before she charged forward once more. Her speed created a gust of wind behind her feet as they tapped quickly against the burnt pavement. The dark-haired one ducked the first attack, doing a backward somersault before landing her feet on the blonde's shoulder. Annie, she whispered before the blonde girl went shooting through the floor with a loud boom, creating a crater that was both deep and wide. Anne placed the sword down, deciding to use her fist instead to finish the other girl off. She dashed down the rim of the crater, a bronze gauntlet formed over her hands, coated in electricity that lit up the whole city. Her body was leaning away, the way forward, like a ro roadrunner, and her eyes were emitting a dark red, and she began to yell, raising her fist. The blonde girl smiled and with the most simplest of movements brought her knee up and smirked darkly as she brought her foot around, smashing Anne's jaw, crashing her through a wall. Coughing nothing but blood at this point, Anne an angrily swept away the debris and roared, leaning forward and lunging again. The silent, windy city was, once and more, filled with the sound of crackling punches and winding kicks that even made small skyscrapers crumble from the force. When Anne finally countered the clever blonde girl with a powerful blow that ripped her ribs in half, she pulled a gun from her waist holster and aimed between the girl's eyes. Anne. The blonde girl whispered, unable to say any more, as it was not in her program. Anne was angry at this point, 
her eyes fiery and her trigger finger itching to pull back. Something held her back, however. Something unprecedented. Something unexpected. This was obviously not in her program before. She began to lower the revolver, falling to her knees as the gauntlet powered off and disappeared into dirt. Emmy, Anne responded. The gash that Emmy left sparked and lit red, trickling blood. She placed the gun down and with caution and helped Emmy up and carried her over to somewhere safe where she could treat her wounds. She was alive.